Hey everybody, hope you're well. Hope you having a hope you had a great week of trading. And with this week coming up with uh, another big earnings announcement, hopefully you have another great week of trading. Um, but today we're going to cover the uh, QQQ or the Nasdaq 100 for the week of May 3rd. Should be another exciting week. Uh, usually we get this out on Friday. Apologize for the lateness. Prep to grow is growing through some rounds of uh, venture capital funding, so we've just been a little bit uh, slammed last week and uh, didn't get this out in time. But uh, hopefully you find this useful. If you do, please like and subscribe. So let's just kind of jump into it. So what's the net net? So last week, we uh, were hoping for a cautious bull with all the great signs around uh, key one performance by the NASDAQ 100 uh, and the QQQ. While they mostly performed well in the general consensus that it was a great quarter for them, um, it was down um, a little bit, about a half a percentage point or 0.6. So... Um, that's unfortunate, uh, but uh, that's that's uh, we did say cautious bull just because earnings is always tricky to play. You never know what's going to happen. Um, the single word could set off a, an entire uh, cascade effect of a market decline. So um, we're expecting this week, May 3rd, with another uh, announcements and earnings announcements to be a bull. Um, less cautious this week. Certainly seeing a lot of signals um, that this week is going to be a strong week. Reasoning, we still have uh, positive economic indicators. Growth is way outpacing stock. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that. We've reset our algorithms for this year since we're kind of past that whole midterm last year. Um, so we're now primarily looking at comparisons for the beginning of 2021, and the graphs will be updated next week, but just want to let people know that before we do it. Um, this week, about 7% or close to 8% of the queues are announcing. Um, we do see a little bit slowness. Uh, it just could be, I don't know, mid Q2. Q2s aren't typically high growth rates. Uh, but there was a little bit of a flatness um, for last week's growth to a little bit of a, a decline. But if we look at it in comparison to stock growth versus company growth, it's, it's, it's still very much outpacing that growth and a lot of opportunity, even with technical bears being um, close to 52 week highs, um, 20 day highs, so on and so forth. It's still looking very good. Again, the concern is the market bubble um, outside of the queues. Uh, the market needs to start growing more rapidly uh, than it has been. And it's been doing that. Um, but still not quite at, at uh, a great enough pace to see this three. So when we say a three stock to growth ratio, that's really high. Typically, you don't want to buy into a market that that's high. You actually want the growth stock to growth rate ratio to be less than one. And that's prep to growth sweet spot. Um, we always look for that in our algorithms to kick out a company with a number like that. Uh, it means great for growth. Now, this would be great for puts. So if you're an option trader, try to find some good opportunities um, where you think a company's going to decline uh, outside of the keys because the keys are looking great or in the NASDAQ 100. So let's jump into the growth. Um, actual stock, again, down uh, about half a percentage point for the last year uh, from last week. Uh, if you look at the red on the right, that shows a downward in growth projections. Um, could it be an anomaly? Could it just be the, the, the Q2 kind of... Um, They've hired everybody for Q1. They've grown a lot over Q1. They're kind of settling into a ramp. Typically, that happens in Q2. So we're not overly worried about it. If it goes on for another two weeks, then then it starts to be a big, big concern. But right now, one week of that, or about two weeks of that, is not a big concern just because, again, it's Q2 uh, and slower period. Now, when we look at uh, stock to growth rate for the Qs, especially for this year, it's there hasn't been a lot of stock growth the Qs versus growth of the companies. And we've been talking about it for a long time that the, the Q companies are just growing gangbusters. And you can tell by this hockey stick chart, um, especially for the beginning of the year, it's still accelerating through, you know, June, July, when it started to pick up and just excel, have been accelerating since. So our growth projections are exceptionally strong for the Qs. Good time to get into it uh, is our recommendation. Again, these are recommendations. Uh, we don't give uh, stock or trading advice. Um, these are just our recommendations based upon our big data and AI platform. Um, now, if we look at the NSCPS forecasts, um, they pulled back a little bit, um, which they've been doing for a little while. Uh, maybe it's caution or maybe it's the broader impact and just kind of adjusting settings. 
I've seen them downgrade a few companies, which just seem weird to me. Uh, Etsy was one last week that they downgraded. Seems very weird that somebody would downgrade uh, Etsy, which has high growth. Uh, but, you know, who knows how analysts actually use this stuff. Usually it's not always clear how they figure this stuff out. Um, so let's jump into who's going to announce this week. Um, last week was a huge week. Tesla, um, AMD, Google, Amazon, Microsoft. Um, so we went into some detail on two made predictions. And if you go to uh, prepyro.com, QQQ, you'll see a write up on usually two companies a week. Um, last week we did Tesla and AMD. Uh, we said AMD is going to crush it. They crushed it. They have an acquisition with Xilinx, which is announcing this week. Uh, we said Tesla was a hold that the, their pricing was at where it should be and that they would have a good quarter, but it wouldn't really matter much. And that's pretty much exactly what happened. Um, this week, it's Activision, PayPal, Xilinx, T-Mobile, Microchip, and Monster are some of the big ones. Um, should be a, another good week. So let's jump into our projections for this week. This week. So this is the PrepDigger application, Cyber. If you want to look up anybody that participates in the queues, you can either just type in uh, QQQ in our stock search and you'll start to see them. Microsoft is a biggie for us around recommendations. Um, the other way to see that is to jump into a filter. If you have, you can do a safe screen for it or just go down to uh, the queue. If you want to add another subsector into it, you can do that. When hit uh, next earnings within the next three weeks, and boom, and I'll show you all who's announcing in the next three weeks. EA is coming up. Uh, Splunk too. Splunk. Uh, but let's jump into the ones for this week. We're going to cover six. Um, just note, Xilinx. Um, we'll cover this one first. Uh, bought by AMD, which essentially means that uh, we'll no longer trade uh, Xilinx. Uh, we're going to remove them. Whenever a company gets acquired, we remove them. Well, we don't remove them. We merge them with the acquiring company as there's a broader impact. Uh, but Xilinx has been doing really well. Um, we bought and sold these guys um, April 23rd. Um, we just got out of them um, last week before uh, AMD announced. Typically what we do, we get out of all earnings, all stocks and options that are going through and earnings within 10 days. Options trading is highly risky, so you know we always get out of that before trading, uh, before announcements, just because announcements are incredibly risky, so the combination of the two is a bad idea. That's our strategy. That's what we recommend to our subscribers uh, is to get out of it beforehand. The next is, let's cover Activision. So Xilinx, don't trade. They've got acquired. Uh, don't play into the to it because it's, it's uh, risky at this point with the acquisition. So Activision, love Activision. Um, I'm a gamer. Um, so love these guys. Um, they're announcing on the May 4th. Our price target is about 5% above where it is. Uh, this is an option um, uh, for November 19, 2021. Not a lot of unusual option activity with Activision right now. Um, we're seeing a lot of calls on this. Our projection is it's going to go up uh, about 4% in stock price. Um, with the whole stay at home, it's coming in near uh, it's it's been slow actually we've seen Activision right around this price point it hasn't adjusted really below 286 or above 91 92 so it has a very tight trading range. it got up to 104 at some point but it's constantly around the $90 price so um, it'll have a small movement in the bump but Activision is looking very good for uh, the quarter um, Qterra, uh, this is, we're expecting Qterra to go down. They're announcing on May 5th, 2021. Um, they do lasers and energy aesthetics um, in Brisbane, California, which is in Southern California. Um, again, we're expecting that they're gonna go down a little bit, uh, about 6%, so not too great of a quarter. Um, they're up today, of course, because of earnings. Um, but yeah, we're projecting they're gonna go down about 6%. Next one, Microchip Technologies. I love Microchip, great company. Um, semiconductor with the shortages and whatnot. Um, they've hit the the, stack, the, uh, the chip companies pretty hard. Um, so these guys, anything for us for stocks, um, anything above a 75, 80%, we're pretty much buy into it. Our stocks are very accurate. 
Uh, we do short stocks. Uh, this was a short on a put um, that we got in and got out of. Um, so put, we're expecting uh, microchip to go down about 5%. They do look like a strong growth, um, but because of the volatility within the stock, uh, within the chip manufacturing, I think this is why the algorithms picked this up as a short. This was recommended on uh, April 7th. Um, we're still expecting them to go down about 5%. Cerner, um, good at 30 days. This is a put, not great at uh, the short term for Cerner. Um, they are announcing May 5th, 2021. We're expecting them to go down about 7%. They do healthcare IT. Uh, I think that general sector is pulling back. Um, and the algorithms are picking up on that. So where are they at on technical wise? I mean, they've had a very close band. Right. I mean, it's not even like 5% difference over the next 200 days. So um, we're expecting them to go down 95, close to 95% accuracy for a stock or a put is exceptionally accurate for us. So um, we'll see how this plays out, but they're certainly on the decline. Um, Xilinx, avoid, acquired by AMD. Don't play acquired companies. You never know how they're going to go. Um, but um, yeah, uh, by AMD, they look great. They're going to smash it, continue to smash it. We haven't seen growth rates so high for a company like uh, that in a long time. But uh, AMD, uh, if they stopped acquiring companies for their uh, quarterly announcement, they would be crushing it. Um, just, uh, but their long term, long term AMD is more of a stock play than an option trade or a long term option play, just because, again, the acquisitions. Um, IDX Laboratories. Uh, they're announcing, oh, they already announced, so we will not cover IDX. Uh, so the other ones we're announcing, uh, we'll cover two on our site. We'll cover Activision uh, and we'll cover uh, Microchip uh, on our site and have detailed uh, write-ups on them. Uh, let's jump back into what does the next 30 day look like for calls and puts in Bear versus Bull. Versus bull. So uh, got a shift that was occurring. Um, so you can see here around this, uh, it shifted from essentially uh, bull to bear. We had a big uptake in options and that's why we said it was a cautious bull. Um, we still see it, them now leveling off a little bit, but still um, looking more like bull because we have a 30 day laggard. Essentially anything that we project around here is really what's gonna happen 30 days later. Um, so keep that in mind. So this was a high growth. And so we're still projecting uh, a bull that's coming up. Uh, but here we start to see a little bit of pullback. And that's what we're seeing in their growth projections over the last two weeks. So just be cautious that while there's a bull over the next two weeks for the queues, we're expecting a little bit of a pullback um, because the algorithms are uh, accurate at predicting out 30 days. So view this as 30 days forward looking. If we jump to the next... Slide, let's talk about the pricing. Um, now we break out bear versus bull signals. There's more bulls uh, uh, signals than bears. Um, it's interesting. Uh, we'll have to look more into this. Um, typically you see this reversed. Um, this just means a lot of small stocks are announcing uh, bull signals, but the pricing is a little weird. Um, more big companies are looking at a bear. There's about 12 indicators of a bear this just means these are the big big companies like a tesla or something like that that's skewing these um medians um a lot of bull signals for the smaller companies so um but the pricing as we factor in things like the fang and the small cap and the non-qs so on and so forth the the big challenge is that the bigger ones are looking to pull back and the smaller ones are looking to go up um when we see this kind of skewing, really, the assumption is that the fangs are looking like there's going to be some pullbacks within that. Um, you know, we thought Tesla was pretty level. Uh, we think there's going to be some pullback with Facebook as an example. So it's probably why um, this pricing the way it is. Um, so again, our assessment for this week, it's going to be a strong bull. Some good announcements. Uh, long term, we see um, that the bull should be good for this week and potentially next week. Uh, but there's bear signals and we see that more coming out within the next two to three, excuse me, three to four weeks. So be very cautious. Don't do anything too long um, 
on the cues for option wise as a call or put. Again, our signals are seeing a little bit of a pullback. Hopefully this helps. Um, I hope you have a great week of trading. Again, everything Preptico talks about is based from our AI big data platform. Uh, it is our recommendations. Um, this is not investment advice. We also playing earnings is highly risky, highly volatile. Um, it's like flipping a coin. Uh, you may have better odds going to Vegas than playing in earnings seasons just because it's not just growth. It's also the human factor and them discussing future and past and that kind of stuff. So it's always much more cautious. And option trading is highly risky, highly concerning. Um, so hope you have a great week of trading and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Take care.